when speaking, though, you do still have to turn these on. It has to be red. But yours is not on yet. If you want to speak, you have to turn that mic button on, the big button, and right in front of the mic. Oh, mine. I don't know why I did that. Good afternoon and welcome to the organizational meeting of the Board of Trustees. In attendance are trustee elect Ward 1, Janine Pequin, trustee elect Ward 2, Cindy Briggs, Trustee elect Ward 3, Joe Dwyer. Trustee elect Ward 4, Trish Murray Elliott. Trustee elect Ward 5, Stacey Buga. Trustee elect Ward 6, Tasha Oatway McClay. Trustee elect Ward 7, Irene Gibbons. This meeting is called to order at 402. 402. We acknowledge that we are on Treaty 6 territory, a traditional meeting grounds, gathering place and traveling route to the Cree, Soto, Blackfoot, Métis, Dene and Nakota Sioux. We acknowledge all of the many First Nations, Métis and Inuit whose footsteps have marked these lands for centuries. We are proceeding to the election of the chair. If needed, this election will proceed with a secret ballot. This is the first call for nominations for the office of the chair of the Board of Trustees. Trustee Briggs. I would like to nominate Joe Dwyer for chair. Trustee Dwyer, would you like to make a speech or make any comments? Uh, I'm good. I accept the nominations. And looking forward to this year, if that's the case. And uh, I think we've got an exciting year in front of us. So. Thank you. This is the second call for nominations for the Office of the Chair of the Board of Trustees. This is the third call for nominations for the Office of the Chair of the Board of Trustees. I would ask for a motion that nominations for the Office of the Chair of the Board of Trustees cease. So moved. Thank you, Trustee, Trustee Oatway McClay. Mr. Tr Joe Dwyer was declared elected as the chair for the Board of Trustees. I would ask Mr. Dwyer, Trustee Dwyer, to assume the chair and congratulations. Hey. Chris can sit here. I'll like to sit here. I'm fine. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm looking forward to this year. I think we've got an exciting year in front of us. There's lots of change and uh, good ideas and good discussion. And when you're able to have that in the way we've been having it, I think uh, only good things can come of that. So um, it's going to be an exciting year. Thank you. And now we'll have to do the same for our vice chair. Um, I'll, I'll do a first call for nomination of vice chair, Trish. Uh, Trish Marie Elliott, Ward 4. I would like to nominate um, Irene Gibbons for Vice Chair. Irene Gibbons, Ward 7. Um, I accept the nomination and if I am allowed to say a few words, my few words will be that 
last year was a very steep learning curve and changes. And this is the year I would hope to be able to continue to support our chair and um, learn more, just not as such a fast paced. Sorry, we're on third call for nominations. Well, I'd like to congratulate Irene as our vice chair and thank you very much. OK, we'll just have a quick two minute break here, just two minutes and we'll get set up for our board meeting. Oh, sorry, yes, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I do want the list now. Sorry about that. We'll go. Uh, we'll do a nomination for our committees. I want to do that first. Sorry, guys. Okay, we're sorry. We'll get ourselves together here. Um, we're going. We're going to read out the. Board code of ethics that must be done at the organize at the organizational meeting. And uh, I'll read it as an elected member of Board of Trustees 1.0. I will devote time, thought and study to the duties and responsibilities of trusteeships so that I may render effective and credible service. 2.0. I will recognize that the expenditure of school funds is a public trust and I will support policies and practices which ensure that all such funds are expended efficiently, economically, and in the best interest of the students and electors of the division. 3.0, I will endeavor to work with my fellow trustees in a spirit of harmony and cooperation in spite of differences of opinion that may arise during vigorous debate. I will avoid, avoid rancor and bitterness, observe proper decorum and behavior, encourage full and open discussions in all matters with my fellow members of the board. I will base my personal decision upon all available facts in each situation, voting my honest conviction in every case. 5.0, I will do everything possible to maintain the integrity, confidence, and dignity of the office of the school trustee, and I will resist every temptation and outside pressure to misuse my position as a trustee to benefit either myself or any other individual or agency. 6.0, I will remember at all times that as an individual, I have no legal authority outside the meetings of the board unless the board has so delegated. My relationships with the school staff and local citizenry and the media will be conducted on the basis of this fact. 7.0, I will always bear in mind that the primary function of the board is to establish the policies by which the schools are to be administered and that the daily administration of the educational program and conduct of school business shall be at the responsibility of the superintendent and his or her staff. Therefore, I will refer, refer complaints and other communications to the superintendent in accordance with policies, procedures approved by the board. I will earnestly attempt to promote goals based on the needs and aspirations of the community and do my best to support effective educational programs for the student. Now, I, I just want to be clear, do each of us have to read that? I can't remember, to be honest with you. Oh boy. I will move that we cease nominations for the uh, vice chair role. Okay, thank you. All those in favor? I apologize, guys. I got carried away there. Okay. And then again, now we've read the code of conduct. Does anybody remember? Do we all have to read that? Just the vice chair and the chair. Shauna. Uh, Shauna Warren, superintendent. So usually the vice chair, but there does need to be that you all need to agree to abide by the code of ethics. So there needs okay. to be more commitment. 
Okay, sorry, I can't remember about that far. Okay. Go ahead, Vice Chair. Okay, let's let's just go ahead. Do we all swear to abide by the code of ethics as we're read? Hands up. Thank you. Unanimous. Okay, what else did we forget? Anything? Good. That was a good start. Okay, thank you. Okay, now we have to vote on the meeting on our board meeting of times, right? Okay, presented in front of you is recommendation and a recommended motion. Can someone make that motion, please? And this would be the time, this is our board, public board meeting and times of our public board meeting and and dates. Trish. Uh, Trish Marie Elliott, Ward 4. I move that the Board of Trustees approve the schedule of public board meetings 2022 to 2023 as attached to the organizational meeting package and further that the public board meetings be held at the Frank Robinson Education Center in Mournville at 9 a.m. Sorry, I just didn't hear. Did you say the fourth Wednesday? I said as per the attached schedule, which I believe is the fourth, fourth Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Not sure what's going on. OK, um, I'll say that again in case somebody didn't hear me. That the Board of Trustees approve the following membership of committees, trustee committees and the board representatives to other organizations be accepted for the 2022 and 2023. School year and I'll read them all out. Advocacy committee would be trustee Tasha, Janine and Stacy. Building and maintenance. I said OK, we just do first names, everybody. Okay, thank you. Building and Maintenance Committee, Joe, Stacy, Cindy. Finance and Human Resources Committee, Tasha, Trish, and Irene. Policy Committee will be Trish, Janine, and Irene. Transportation Committee will be Joe, Cindy, and Stacy. Uh, Municipal Liaison Committee, it's a quorum. Around here is them. ATA Negotiation Committee, Tasha, Irene, and Stacy. Our QP Negotiations Committee, Trish, Joe, and Cindy. Our Teacher Board Advisory Committee will be Trish, Joe, and Cindy. Our Labor Management, oh, that's what's here though. Sorry, I just read that. Sorry, it's, yeah, whatever I got passed to me has. Okay, I better read off yours. OK, we'll go that again. So teacher board advisory committee, Tasha, Trish, Janine. Labor management committee, QP, Joe, Cindy, Trish. Alberta School Board Association, zone 23, Janine, alternate Stacy. Public. OK. Oh. Wow, I'm just really struggling here. Um, OK, we OK? Okay, Public School Board Association of Alberta, Trustee Trish, 
alternate is Irene. T by Representative Janine. Sturgeon Composite High School School Council, Trish and Joe. Sturgeon Public Virtual Academy School Council, Tasha and Stacy. Um, our Student Discipline Committee is a quorum of two of the trustees. Morinville Rotary Representative, Joe. Community Service Advisory is Cindy. So as those names are read, I'd like a motion. Uh, there is a motion out there. Uh, any questions on that? Okay, all those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Well, that was fun. And I need a motion to adjourn the organizational meeting. Tasha, thank you. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Sir? Well, we were going to have two minutes, but I think we'll keep going. OK, motion to uh, we'll start the agenda for public board meeting. We'll call it to order. I'm sorry. Um, consideration of the agenda. Any additions or deletions to today's agenda? None. And I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Trish, thank you. All those in favor? Thank you. Unanimous. Any appointments? No appointments today. Uh, reading and approving of the minutes of June 22nd, 2022 of our regular meeting. Motion accept, Trish. Or something yeah. to say about them. Uh, Trish Marie Elliott, Ward 4. Yes, I do move, but there is a correction, if you don't mind, on page 10. Um, it says that I attended the central office luncheon, but I did not. And and the reason that's there is because we had put this in before that occurred and something came up at the wrong last minute. So if that could be removed, that would be awesome. Okay. Because uh, then we're back to where we're sitting. Okay, we'll, we'll figure it out. Then okay. I got do you it. want to move? No, we got it. Okay, turn your turn yours on again. I won't I won't speak again. <laughs> okay, thank you. We're just trying to figure out our mics here. Uh, okay. So can I have a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting with the correction? Trish. I move to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of June twenty second, two zero two two. Any questions? All those in favor? Unanimous. Presentations, there is none today. Um, reports from senior executive. Administrative procedure 700. Lisa. Lisa Lacroix, Associate Superintendent of Human Resources. Administrative Procedure 700 certificated staff was amended to align with Bill 85. The Education Statute Students First Amendment Act 2021, which received royal assent on December 2nd, 2021, and was proclaimed on June 15th, 2022, to come into effect September 1st, 2022. The changes to the Education Act will include language regarding mandatory criminal record checks upon hire and every five years of ongoing employment. Further, the Alberta Teachers Association. Association Mediators Report, which was ratified in June 2022, contains a letter of understanding with the following language. The school division shall reimburse the teacher for the costs of complying with any requirement to provide a criminal record check and vulnerable sector check as part of their ongoing employment. The amended AP 700 will include the requirement to obtain a criminal record and vulnerable sector check every five years, and the employee shall be reimbursed for the associated costs. The employee continues to be responsible for the costs associated with the initial criminal record and vulnerable sector check required at the time of hiring. This change will affect approximately 271 employees within the first 16 months of the effective date, and the cost varies 
depending on the location that they're getting their criminal record check from 40 to $76, which will place a cost of approximately 11,000 to 21,000 on the division. Administration is prepared to respond to questions. Any questions? Stacy? Stacy Bugo, Ward 5. Um, the total cost that you referred to, is that going to be the one time now and then expected to repeat every five years? Or how often do we expect those kinds of expenses? So the one time cost will be a little bit higher, of course, because we have 271 uh, employees. But depending on what the uh, number of employees have, it will fluctuate. But if we take that we had to do this many right now and then we have to do them again in five years, it would be approximately the same cost about every five years. Okay. And we don't need a motion on that. Believe? No. Okay. 6.2. Administrative Procedure 722. Lisa. To provide the opportunity to evaluate the performance and competency of newly designated school administrators. A process and timeline is required to allow for a for fair evaluation of their leadership performance based on the leadership quality standards. Previously, AP 722 did not address the process or the timeline for contracts of new or probationary contract principals and VPs. The rewrite of AP 722 now clearly defines this process and the timelines. A newly written AP 723, which you will see in the next agenda item, will address the information and processes contained in the previous AP 722. Administration is prepared to respond to questions. Any questions? Thank you. 6.3, Administrative Procedure 723. Lisa. Sturgeon Public Schools recognizes the importance of having effective school administrators who are accomplished teachers to direct student learning and the business of the division. Previously, AP 723 did not address the growth and supervision component for school administrators, which is now contained in the new AP 723. The new AP 723 clearly defines the process for growth, supervision, and evaluation of a school administrator. Administration is prepared to respond to questions. Any questions? Stacy. Stacy Bugo, Ward 5. Um, mostly just out of curiosity, um, it looks like some of the changes was going from a term contract to a continuous contract. Is there is there a benefit or is it just simply for continuity and job security for the the administrators that we're employing? Lisa. It was actually part of the mediator's report for the ATA negotiations, so it was ratified on behalf of the central bargaining. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. 6.4, Administrative Procedure 711. Go ahead, Jonathan. Thank you, Chair. John Conrad, Deputy Superintendent. Um, for your information, Chair and Trustees, uh, this is a corresponding uh, AP to the policy that the board uh, reviewed, both policy committee and the board themselves, and uh, voted into effect back in June. This corresponding AP, as APs do, focus on actions that our staff will do. So outlined our actions for principal and teacher. The only changes, as you can see, there's track changes provided for you, really are some word alignment to ensure it matches the way we presented the words in the policy and some other title changes and whatnot. Prepare to answer any questions you may have. Any questions? Thank you. 6.6, 6, Administrative Procedure 440. Oh, oh, sorry, did I miss one? Yeah, sorry, Administrative Procedure 712. Jonathan. 
Thank you, Chair. Jonathan, Deputy Superintendent. Uh, this is also a corresponding AP to a policy the, the board reviewed last year. Um, there are a few more changes in this policy also in a line, sorry, procedure also to align with the policy that the board has approved, but following the same uh, pattern that our procedures do, it goes into a bit more depth. The um, actions that we are uh, encouraging and directing of our staff to ensure uh, all uh, people that work or learn in Sturgeon are respected. Administration prepared to take any questions. Any questions? Thank you. 6.6 6, Administrative Procedure 440 Locals Authority Benchmark. Lisa. Administration has amended AP 440, uh, 440 as devised by the external auditor in June 2022. AP 440 must include the new section 12.1 and 13 to ensure compliance with the local authority's pension plan guidelines, which state that full time equivalent un units must be listed in the organization guidelines. Administration is prepared to respond to questions. Any questions? Thank you. 6.7 board retreat. The board retreat is presented in front of you. Uh, Shauna, go ahead. Shauna Warren, superintendent. Um, so annually, the board of trustees and senior executive attend a board retreat. And this retreat presents an opportunity for the board and senior exec to reflect, discuss, and plan the work to be undertaken for the school year ahead. So this year, the board retreat is scheduled for October 3rd and 4th. And attached for trustee review is the agenda for the two day retreat. The agenda was built to reflect the feedback that was received from the board at the June 2022 retreat planning meeting. And we are prepared to respond to questions. So you will see that there is a uh, agenda for day one, which does include um, Dr. Marty Schaefer, who is with Franklin Covey Education. And uh, we did seek out uh, different speakers to see what would fit for what the board was asking for and his um, bio and what he presents on is there and the outline for day two is also included any questions stacy stacy bugle ward five uh just curious there's no location indicated but i believe there was some some thought of going off site. So if there was any leads there, that'd be great. Uh, yes, we were going off site. Now I need to confirm as to where we were going. Administration will get back to you ASAP because that should be on the memo. I apologize. Okay, so we'll further that information later on. Okay, thanks for the question. Any other questions on our retreat? Looking forward to it. It's a great, great agenda and uh, will be very interesting and um, I know we'll have some great discussion on some topics. Okay. 6.8 communications report. Jonathan, I believe. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Jonathan, Deputy Superintendent. I'm very excited to uh, to present this report to you and I will acknowledge going in. It's for your information uh, that we are also excited to welcome Lauren Walter to Sturgeon Public Schools as our manager of marketing and communications as the beginning of August. Uh, and this report uh, is her work. She reported it, uh, prepared it for us to, to review. And I uh, hope you are encouraged by the engaging nature of this report. Some images to remind you of the work that we did. You know, in July, we focused on, on getting our programs up, especially open air kindergarten. Um, virtual Academy we've been promoting, Logos program we've been been on, um, the new Legal School, of course, and I know that many trustees here were uh, in the parade, which was a highlight, I'm told. Sadly, I didn't make it. Apologies. Um, but we also have continued to work now in August uh, is a time to do a lot of strategic planning. We will be bringing uh, for information to the board a bit more about the uh, strategic plan and, and communication report. And I'm sure you've seen more of our social media around Legal and the 
bright team that, that it is with their sign waving and whatnot. Uh, and also just a few uh, highlights of, of upcoming um, or times we've been quoted, sorry, in the media, and then a few upcoming events. I'm certainly prepared to take any questions or comments on the report. Irene? I just want to say the, because I'm only technically savvy on Facebook, not on the other social media platforms, and the presence that Sturgeon Public School has had on Facebook is very impressive. And so, thank you. Donna? I would like just to put the plug to everybody that is online and to all of our trustees that when you go to your school council, please, school council meetings, please encourage all parents to follow us on social media and to share far and wide. Great. Cindy? I would just like to commend Lauren. Um, we met her the other night at the Legal Public School opening, open house, and she's doing a great job on social media. So we're off to a great start. Thank you. 6.9 facility services. Shauna. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Shauna Warren, superintendent. Well, our facilities team has been very busy, and if uh, there's a wonderful report here, I have a couple other things that I will add uh, to this verbally. So this is their summer uh, project update. And so from this is from July 1st, and some of it is still ongoing. And as you know, our schools are getting very close to opening, so we're scrambling to uh, try to get them finished before our children walk through the doors. So all of our uh, school properties were sprayed for weed control in July. And uh, bids are currently being accepted from contractors for uh, snow removal and facilities is working hard on uh, having a standardization of that service. Um, grass cutting is has been occurring on an 11 day rotation. The HEPA project continues uh, and they're at about 50% completion. The installation and product costs are being investigated for water flow detectors. And if the board remembers from last year, um, just with Sturgeon Comp that then facilities was looking across all of our just schools as to be more proactive how to prevent this. So there will be a center installed and this is for all of our schools on the main water line and it would detect water flow outside of normal operation. It will also uh, it, it will not prevent damage, but it may help that it would reduce the amount of it. And of course, alarms would go off and it should also reduce our insurance premiums. Um, the uh, start architecture will begin the value scoping. And again, that's for the town of Gibbons that we're working uh, with the town of Gibbons and the board is aware of that um, for a potential uh, new school in cooperation as a P3. The for central office, our building uh, modifications began on August 15th and the board you're encouraged to uh, just walk around and look and we hope to be done by mid to end next week. Bax has shiny new paint and it began on August 11th and it, it looks fantastic. Um, Camilla School a storage facility is in development and fencing is uh, close to completion and the board chair will provide an update on Camilla School later. Uh, for four winds, the storage facility is anticipated to be finished before the start of the year. Given School has that interior painting going on for the entire summer. The Gal Public School, they're still trying to, we're trying to finalize um, for the one bathroom renovation project, and that was to change one of the bathroom stalls into an individual stall for staff. And um, that, it will not be ready to go for the beginning of school, um, but we're trying to get that done as, as soon as possible. Landing Trail, that uh, bathroom renovation is now complete. Lillian Schick, uh, there's also, they also had a partial uh, roof maintenance that did begin the end of July and the sidewalk replacement is complete. Nemeo School had new cabinets and flooring that have been installed in the kitchen and countertops, and a partial repaving of the parking lot has also been completed. Oka Park had a partial roof maintenance uh, repair done. Redwater School, there was renovation to the Goals classroom, and it's almost completed, and the library flooring uh, was replaced, and the living wall has been installed. Sturgeon Comp, they began a design discussion for the new field house. And Sturgeon Heights estimates to hire a contractor for this project, and that was for the weight room. Um, it actually exceeds the budget, so therefore um, they are looking at the architectural drawings and 
uh, facilities is going to supervise some general contractors to complete the project so that it's not so expensive and the sidewalk um, replacement has been completed. At uh, Morinville Public, um, we do have a plumber out there uh, tomorrow to fix a few deficiencies in the washrooms and the landscaping and sod should be complete before kids return next week. So fingers crossed cross that that's done and the exterior sign uh, they are still trying to get that finalized and we really hope that that is going to be up soon that it has a proper exterior sign and of course I'm prepared to respond to questions. Trish. Uh, Trish Marie Elliott, Ward 4. Um, further to the water flow detectors, I, I think that's a great start, but when we look at the cost of having these frozen pipes and floods, I know a lot of people now have these little temperature things where it's really easy to look at them on their phone. Are there any other safeties that we could relatively inexpensively get into play? Tana Warren, superintendent, um, that was brought to the board last year. That was when they were looking at all the furnace and the heating systems that they were looking on that alarm to go in when there was a large temperature change. So that was separate from this, but they had started installing and it was an update. But I can bring back to the board uh, where we are on that. Thank you. Asha. Asha Oatway McClay, Ward 6. Um, I would like to pass my thanks on to the to the team who are doing all of these things. Um, I was watching with bated breath as they repaved the parking lot at Nemeo thinking, oh, thank goodness, we can save on suspension now. So I just wanted to say thank you because they did they did work very hard, very quickly, and they cleaned up very nicely. So pass the thanks to them. Any more questions? Thank you. 6.10 fuel, fuel contingency program reinstatement, Shauna. Shauna Warren, superintendent. Um, so this past June, um, the Minister of Education did announce that the government was reinstating the fuel price contingency program. And uh, we had um, shared that with the Board of Trustees. So it did result in school boards um, to receive a payment for March through June. And that payment was received in July and it was uh, based on established bus route distances. And additionally, the government clarified that the bus route distances would not, uh, sorry, would be based on the route mileages reported by each uh, school division in their 1920 uh, funding application. So we received a total payment of $413,729. And we, this amount was divided by the total kilometers traveled between March and June for all contractors and this payment was processed to them on July 21st. Thank you. Any questions? Stacy. Stacy Bugle, Ward 5. Um, I guess I'm just curious to hear was, what was the reaction from the contractors? Because I know we've had a lot of negotiations and uh, back and forth with them. So if, if you've got any sort of takeaway from that. Shana? Uh, the contractors were very excited and they felt it was very timely. We were it was nice because we got the money. And we were able to get the money out to them, so they were very grateful. Yeah, and just on that, uh, the ones in my area have commented to me and actually phoned me and thanked us very much for forwarding that to them. So. OK. The Gal Public School Update 6.11, Shauna. Shauna Warren, superintendent. Well, we've definitely been on the fly since this was announced. It's been lots of fun. We currently have 12 students enrolled in the school, and I know with our amazing team that is out at the school and the amazing division that we are, we will soon have more. So we have four pre-K, uh, one kindergarten, one grade one, two grade twos, two grade threes, and one grade four, and who knows, we should reach out to Ms. Brenneyes because that was as of this morning, so there could be more. Um, the meet and greet on Monday was highly successful and I have to say I've heard from our trustees who attended and from the principal and they felt that it was uh, a wonderful way um, to welcome um, and to introduce themselves into the community. And uh, again, you'll notice we did have the two billboards up and we had the parade and it's been 
quite full of eventful things happening and we look forward to seeing what happens as we open officially open and have kids walk through the front door. Any questions? Well, it's definitely very visible our advertisement and uh, and some of the programs we're doing and being in the parade and having uh, the ones that have registered meet the teachers and principal and that and vice principal. It's all good stuff. Okay. 6.12 mental health services classrooms, February 2023. Shauna. Uh, Shauna Warren, superintendent. Um, this is a quite an amazing announcement. We feel so fortunate uh, that we have been chosen us uh, in Edmonton public to actually pilot uh, these mental health service classrooms. It's quite unbelievable. And we have a meeting mid-September. That's our first meeting with CASA. So right now I can't, other than I, what I've provided, I can't give you more information. But as you know, this division has been very passionate about social emotional learning, about supporting our the entire child. And we have done great work on trauma and forward practices and on truly meeting the whole child and supporting them emotionally and not just academically. And I'm very proud of the work we do. And for this, this is kind of like icing on the cake. And it truly just makes us go, wow, can we ever um, put um, more of our medical um, teams together with our school teams and the training, the opportunities that it's going to bring and how this can bring services to our families is truly outstanding. So I would love to provide you more. Uh, if I could, I'd have it in every single one of our schools. And don't worry, I'll be shouting from the rooftops to uh, continue this. I really hope we already do a great job. And I know between us and CASA, this is going to be amazing, an amazing opportunity for our families and our children. And I'm just so excited. And uh, like I said, we have a meeting in uh, mid-September. And uh, it is planned to be begin in February. So basically after semester break, that's the plan is when CASA would be uh, moving uh, their staff in and, and uh, they're going to be training our staff. And so I look forward to uh, bringing this to our families, more information as we get it. Thank you. Any questions? Stacy. Stacy Fugo, Ward 5. Um, just curious how CASA will be working with our newly branded SHINE program, uh, the former disability services. Uh, just to make sure that we're not, you know, s losing something that has been a really positive uh, for something that could also be positive, but I don't want to lose that connection. Sean? So this is completely separate. We have our he lovely Helen Lawrence that's on right now. And so this is completely separate because this is truly coming from the school. And so we already have an amazing relationship uh, with our shine and they work with our families outside. And we will for sure ensure that that team is included um, because, as you know, it's our job to bring all of our community services together to provide the best support for our families. And so absolutely. So Mrs. Helen Lawrence, get ready because uh, you're going to be part of this too as we uh, bring this to our schools and then embed it into our communities. Janine. Uh, Janine Pequin, Ward 1. This looks amazing and I mean, we'll take it. My concern is there's no elementary, right? It's just four winds in high school. So it would be lovely if in the course of this, we could expand to elementary too, because. Shauna. Yeah, and it's a great point. So that wasn't an option. So CASA chose and they wanted a middle school and a high school, and that's where they started. So this is their starting point. And again, this is not our initiative. This was brought to us. Now, we do have staff. There is a reason for this program has come to us. And at some point, once it's all confirmed, I'm going to give a shout out to those staff members who are the reason that we were chosen, because it's truly, this is grass grown why CASA has chosen us along with El uh, Edmonton Public, because we are very fortunate. And it's a very good point. You will notice that they have quite a lofty goal as to how much they want to grow this program. So they're starting with us, but their goal is to expand very quickly. And as you know, we're going to help them expand and start insurgent. <laughs> and so it's very exciting because their goal is for 20 operational mental health service classrooms serving 360 children by 2024. And they're starting with our the two school divisions, but they're going to expand. But we will help them. And this is truly a team effort. CASA, it just in our beginning meeting, uh, it is, uh, it's a wonderful partnership. And they have also said they need to learn from us too, because this is not a therapeutic setting. This is an educational setting. And so this is an amazing opportunity for uh, both our 
uh, medical system and our school system to work together to bring what's best for kids. So now I'm sounding like a preacher because, as you know, this is my passion, so I'm very excited about it. Thank you. Any other questions? 6.13 monthly financial report. Shauna. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So provided for your information um, are both the June 2022 and the July uh, 2022 uh, monthly financial reports. Um, for you as information. And I just want you to know on top of the information that's provided here for your information um, that uh, the July month in report, it does not include many expenses because schools aren't in and staff are away on holidays. So July is really probably one of our most least accurate of all reports in the year. And um, there's a lot of boards that actually don't do the summer because it's well you notice the swing from June July it's quite big and so it's 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 a little wonky and it's because of that so some of our schools if they were off and then projects or they ordered things in then of course then it would come now and bills would be paid now so it's that's why there was uh, also quite a big um, swing and um, especially things like our it does not include the July um, or August of course not here but those visa expenses um, and then like August payroll, stuff like that will be coming up. So that's why there's quite a large um, swing on top of the information that is provided there. And if you would like more information, as you know, next month when our secretary treasurer uh, is back, then uh, you will get another monthly report and you could ask our lovely uh, Liliana more in depth questions. Thank you. Any more questions on that? Thank you, everybody. IT report. 6.14, Jonathan. Thank you, Chair. John Conrad, uh, Deputy Superintendent. Uh, provided for information is a monthly report on some of the work that IT has done. Some of this work actually is July and August, even though I see it only says August. Uh, they did finish the uh, rollout of the display change for all schools. So that means schools or staff that identified Epson received new Epson projectors. Schools or staff that identified law boards, as we see here, received a law board. There is a second phase to that, which is to reevaluate with principals to find out is there areas that we missed? Is there areas to improve specifically on classroom display? But the first round, as identified, has been completed. Um, there was a significant number of end users and end users end user device upgrades, including some uh, office equipment that I'm told that has been sitting unupdated or not evergreen for some time. So we're talking office clerk, office administration, that type of people that have a desktop unit, and that has been updated. Um, SuperNet upgrade. You may recall our first crack at a SuperNet upgrade uh, resulted in lack of communication to a few schools as they went dark. Um, the solution to that was actually resolved in house, even though all of our providers, the SuperNet, were working on it, their technicians as well. But um, uh, our, our technicians found the settings that needed to be allowed through so that phones were allowed through. And so I don't think it's quite finished, but uh, it's it's pretty close. Oh, does it say all? Oh, we... Good, because when I first received this report from our director of uh, Technology and Logistics, there was one other site, so now it's at all, so we've got them all. Um, the last part is is really more, in, like, well, it's all information, but this part, um, as I clarified with the director, the changes to, to Google should not have any front-facing or user-facing changes. It was all back-end changes to make sure that we're working um, with the, the way that they uh, have us comply. Then attached is uh, the report that we've seen before that highlights connectivity on just three, but three of our major services, right? We use Google services for a lot of our documents, for our classroom and work with students. Of course, we use Microsoft services, again, for a lot of our documents, communication like Teams and whatnot, uh, and then PowerSchool as our student information service. That's the core of all of our, just that, information on students, but also marks and whatnot. Um, they were remained up and have been updated. Uh, and then, if this hasn't been clear before, the Chromebooks that are highlighted here are division-owned Chromebooks, right? So when you see a school, just I'm just calling out a school that I know is BYOD Sturgeon Heights. That's 210 division-owned and are used by students within that school. 
but there may be significant numbers of Chromebooks that are owned by students accessing the network for the purpose of education in that school. Just to clarify what that is, and I'm prepared to take any questions on the report. Any questions? Cindy. Cindy Briggs, board two. John, is it um, the IT's vision to transition our division to have either Epson or Loft that we're all kind of the same? Jonathan. I would I would respond to say it is it is our vision as administration to work with IT and school principals to talk further about that to see if there's strength in a more consistent all schools one way or even within schools that all like so that you're not a teacher in one classroom getting ready to teach and you know how to connect to your loft board and then you go to the neighboring classroom and now you have to connect to Epson but that discussion and vision needs to be um, held with the voice and input of our administrators also seeking the voice of our teachers I did find that when we were on our school tours that there was some differences like within a school. So just kind of wondering where we're going with that. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Stakeholder engagement update. Jonathan. Thank you, Chair. John Conrad, uh, Deputy Superintendent. Uh, provided for your information, uh, as your, the board is well aware, one of our, our stakeholders and community partners is Alexander First Nation and the Kaputika Education Centre within the Alexander First Nation. And this update is to highlight some of the actions coming back in spring that we as schools or administration have done acting um, under clear in intent and guidance from the board to ensure that our relationships with all stakeholders, in this case with Alexander, and specifically Kaputika Education and their education department is improving. And as you read the report, which is here for information, I hope that you uh, see or hear um, that we're trying to ensure this is also school working with school. So that it is, yes, it's important that, that, that I as deputy and my director has great relationships with their director and 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 the governance of education in Kaputika Education Center. I suggest it's equally or perhaps more important that the schools that uh, Alexander students are coming to, so Camilla and Sturgeon Composite High School, that they have excellent and direct communication back and forth with the people involved in education. So you can see they've met a few times, and the intent is to continue to meet. So. Um, I'll be a part of those as, as much as possible, but they will be driving it. So what I mean by that is the conversations about, hey, can the grade four students, as they did, can they come and be part of our field day at Camilla, the students at Kaputka, right? Or in this case, it was the staff at Camilla that went to see what a culture day looks like on Kaputka. Like, what does it look like to harvest medicine or walk into this area? The intent is the staff to understand, but then to bring um, kids that are currently in Sturgeon to, to come out to um, Alexander and to be a part of a day like that, just as some of their students come to us. So I, I clearly this report, in case it's not clear to the board, is to show we're really trying to deepen our lateral connections and sharing back and forth between ourselves at Sturgeon and uh, the education that's happening on Alexander. So prepared to take any any more questions on that. Any questions, Stacy? Stacey Buco, Ward 5. Um, thank you for all of that. That's a lot of effort and a lot of connection making, and I see great potential there. Um, I'm looking at the Cree language program at Camilla. Is there any thought about the, um, the Cree Head Start program? I know my predecessor, Misty Featherly, was quite um, an advocate for the, Head, the Cree Head Start program here in Mournville. There was uh, I know a few families that were interested, so I'm just curious if that might be making any sort of headlines. Uh, uh, just in response, I'll, I'll have to say thank you for that information, and I'll take that under advisement, and, and we'll be able to update you if we um, have anything more to do with. Uh, that's exciting. That's what I'm saying, but I need to know more information about it. Thank you. <laughs> hey, any more questions on that? Thank you, Jonathan. Okay, 2022 2023 Superintendent Discretionary Fund, Shauna. 
Shauna Warren, superintendent. So as part of the budget process, a certain amount of dollars, as you are aware, were allocated um, annu annually uh, in a budget selection uh, titled superintendent discretionary. So for this school year, the total budgeted amount uh, is $800,000. The superintendent's discretionary fund is a dollar amount uh, that is set aside to support our schools with any additional staffing requirements that arise after the budget has been approved. And so to date uh, for the upcoming school year, the following uh, additional staff have been added to schools uh, using the superintendent discretionary fund dollars. And so there is a staff so far by schools and uh, we have had some increased enrollment. So I will provide if there's any further every month, this report will come to you so you can see uh, what the dollars are being spent on. Any questions on that report? Thank you very much for that report. It's uh, I think it's a valuable report so we can understand where that money's being spent. I have two documents here, Shauna, that are not on the agenda. And I was going to ask that at the beginning, but I forgot. Um, yeah. It's under your oh, it's yeah. under the board chair's report, 7.1. Oh, okay, there it is. Okay, reports from trustees and standing committees. Chair's report, 7.11. Meeting with the education minister, two topic suggestion. Donna, you want to take that? Sean. Donna. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And so the minister did reach out uh, to all school boards and they did give a, a very short allotment of time and said that we could uh, bring forward uh, two topics. And of course, uh, right now the board chair is actually asking for you as trustees if you have other topics. As administration, we do have two suggestions that uh, we would like the board to consider, but again, you can feel free to um, change that. And again, it's very short. We have about 30 minutes, so it's quite quick. And so one of the topics uh, we were wondering would be the town of Legal in the school um, space. And so as you are aware that in 2015, there was a value scoping um, um, summary that was completed, and it was a big exercise where uh, the school boards got together, the Francophone G Sacred uh, Sturgeon and the government, and they actually did this whole summary that was provided to you, and I could provide it to you again, and they came up with solutions, what they thought, and then there was an election and, and it went away. And so now the Francophone school is opening, and we are just maybe suggesting that maybe that is something that we actually bring forward to say that could this be revisited, um, especially with the limited size of the space that we have, so that was one consideration. A potential second topic is the mental health service classrooms. Um, we would like um, the minister to consider. Um, we had put forward because they asked for uh, basically grade five to 12 is what they were looking for in round one. And Gibbons School was our third choice. And so um, I would like Gibbons uh, School would like to, if we could push forward. So if the board uh, would entertain that, maybe we could put that forward to say we're ready to go. Our team is, and if CASA could do it, could we actually move forward in February with three instead of two? But those were just two potential topics uh, that administration would like the board to consider. Any questions or any suggestions on that? I, it kind of got thrown at you here, so let's let's give it some time, and if. Uh, if anybody has any ideas, please give me a call and we'll we can talk about those ideas. OK. Chair's report. Um, I'm going to start off with uh, Camilla School. Um, we've had a I've had a very busy summer around Camilla School and and this is to do with a little bit about um, our deficiencies. And one of them I'll start with within the school. Um, the floor, the gym floor was uh, marked up wrong. All the lines are wrong and those type of things. There's lots of measurements that were off. So this summer they redid the floor. But uh, a concern has is they could, you could see places in the floor now where the old lines were. So it really looks bad. And and we actually did a little measuring and there's some more off again. Um, but anyways, uh, so that's been brought forward to Alberta Infrastructure and the contractor. And also another thing on the floor is um, they mark you mark the lines on the floor. They're a little bit of a raised uh, marking and it looks like only one coat has been put on the floor because some of those markings you can almost rub off with your hands. Um, and when you get a bunch of kids running around and. Uh, so we're going to we're going to follow that up, but the bigger item um, 
is outside our civil work. Uh, I could show uh, some pictures a little later on. I don't have them brought up right now, but uh, we're getting severe flooding in a lot of portions of the schoolyard outside. There, it will start at the back end. There was a storm uh, drainage kind of pond built at right in, basically in the playground, just right beside it. And it's very open and that's had up to four feet in it and it doesn't drain away. No fence around it, those type of things. So they did some work in there and uh, under their suggestions and they did that work and in our last rain on Saturday, again, it filled up about uh, two or three inches and it's not draining away. So we've got a serious problem there. Now we also have uh, what they've done and, and one thing to rec uh, realize is that, and they realize this at, at design and engineering, is that the, the drainage system around there is not very good. So they designed this system to handle it. And they put it in, and, I, and all they could, probably the best way to explain it, it's like a big weeping tile system underneath. But it's not going anywhere. So anytime it rains, and, and there's about four areas that kind of puddle into the middle, and it's supposed to go down and drain out of there. And it's not draining. It's uh, completely not draining. And actually, they did some fixes. Some did uh, leave the work. And we had that little rain. I think it was about two tenths of an inch on Saturday. And they were watering the lawn, and they're all filled again. And it actually, the water crosses a sidewalk, so that even the teachers coming have to wear rubber boots to get to the school. Um, and another thing showed up. It was a sinkhole. It just showed up. And uh, I'm going to be real truthful here, and I, I think we need to do this publicly, is they just took some washed rock and filled the hole. There needs to be an investigation of why that sinkhole is there and there needs to be there. That's all we need is uh, one of our children come to school and disappears in a hole. Um, and that's right in kind of a walking area where kids are all the time. Uh, so we have a severe problem. I, I'm going to be truthful we're working with them it's come to a point where we're going to have to further our concern um i i you know it's kind of at a stage where uh, the contractor has said that they've built it to design that's what we designed that's what we built it to so you know they're kind of saying we've done our job and the designers and the architects say no it's built to work and it should work well it's not working and it just seems like nobody's really jumping on top of this. Um, so I did go to a little further and with my concerns, and it seems like there's some buzz going around Alberta infrastructure and all that. Um, so we'll see where that all goes. Another outcome of that is that uh, on supposedly on August 31st, Alberta infrastructure will be signing off on the project that it's done. We have written a letter to them, asked them not to, for all those reasons. Yeah, I'm not sure if you have seen that letter. Good. Um, so that's where we stand. And it's a huge concern because if it does get signed off and they go away, that is going to be our responsibility to look after in the future. And we're not, we don't want that. Um, it is a serious problem. It's uh, not cosmetic problems. All the grass keeps dying, but it's just flooding and sitting in water. And when it goes away, the grass is dead. Um, so there's some serious problems there. We're working on it. We've had a few meetings during the summer and uh, it's come to a point where we're kind of furthering that in a different direction and getting some strategy around what we do there. So that's, any questions on that before I go away from it, Stacy? Do we have legal, like uh, would we be able to take any legal action if we get past this August 31st and Alberta Infrastructure does sign off on this? I think that's something we have to talk about and look at, but I think we're going to use every aspect of working with them to try to get this fixed. Um, Tasha. All right, so uh, the question I have is that it would appear or seem that the water table wasn't taken into consideration during the project design. And I'm just wondering, we had a geotech report done. Does the work that was completed um, align with the geotech report? So, so you're absolutely right. And we have, we're actually, that's part of the documentation that we're presenting today, that they knew about that the water tables were high there, the drainage was a problem. 
That was all considered, and that's why it was engineered the way it is. And basically what it is, is there's big tanks underneath. So the idea of it in a very basic concept is that when it rains and it goes in the middle, it'll sink into these tanks, and then slowly from there, go out like a weeping tile. It's not working. So yes, they did take it into consideration, but what they engineered is not working. That's One more question. We are seven days from boots on the ground. What actions have we taken as a division to protect uh, staff and students? Okay, we've asked our maintenance group to fence everything. Uh, all spots where we think could provide any type of danger. And it'll be like a snow fence for now um, and some supervision while our kids are there. But uh, another thing too is, um, you know, on the uh, off times, our kids in the neighborhood use it. So it is a big concern, but we're going to do everything we can to make it safe or, you know, and fenced off and those type of things. And some instruction to the, probably to the students in the school at the beginning of the year. So those are the type of things that they're going to do. Any other questions on that one? It's it's a huge issue and uh, we'll keep you up to date. Um, I did attend the powwow at Alexander. Um, it was a lot of fun. I've been to them before. Um, the interesting thing for me was that uh, I sat there to watch and I stayed quite a while, but um, uh, Chief George Arcan Jr. sat beside me for come up, sat beside me for a while. And we had good discussion. Uh, Scott and Chris, two counselors, come up later on, and Harvey Burnstick, which has been on council and and a big part of their school, he sat with me the whole time and was explaining things. And it, it was an experience again, as it has been. I really enjoyed myself, but that connection that they provided with me was uh, really special for me. And I was representing the, the school division and myself, and um, it worked out really, really good. Uh, what? <laughs> One thing I, I will say to you that, and I think it was a good comment on our part, uh, Harvey actually said that, uh, Mr. Bernie said, and this was about 10 o'clock, 9.30, and this thing went on until early in the morning. There was a, a lot of uh, performances and that type of thing. He said, look around, Joe. And I looked around, and maybe this isn't the right thing right now, but I'm going to say it. And he said, look around, and I said, I couldn't figure out what he was trying to talk about. He says, you're the only one still here. He said, everybody else was gone. It's basically the reserve citizens and you. And he said, I'm really thank you for sticking around and, and being a part of this. So um, they recognize those type of things and uh, and we were represented in a good way that way. Okay. Now the rest of the summer was basically um, a couple of meetings here and Rotary and, but the Camilla School was the big thing for me during this summer. Any questions on any of that? Okay. Can we start with Irene on trustee reports? There's probably not much, guys, but. First of all, I have to apologize to my fellow board members and senior admin and uh, Crystal. I did not get my report, written report in on time, um, but I will rectify that so it can be posted. Um, the legal parade. Uh, if we could do that in every community, it was amazing. That's all I can say. Thank you. Dasha. Apologies from Ward uh, 6 as well. Uh, Tasha Oatway McClay, um, it was a good summer. Had a chance to interact with some of the people in our community and our neighborhood um, at garage sales, which I love. And I was also um, able to attend the PSBC uh, meeting in August here in Edmonton. Uh, the business meeting went very well, I think. So um, it was a good meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Stacy Bugle Ward 5. Um, no surprises, I stayed very busy, <laughs> as I do. Um, I did the I attended the Canadian School Board Association conference um, just on my own because I wanted to know more about what as a nation what school boards are doing and it was amazing I I was very impressed I put all the PD notes into our Google Drive already if anybody wanted to take a look or has already 
um, if we're chatting in our planning for the next year, I really hope we do uh, consider. I mean, it's the next CSBA is going to be in Jasper or Banff. Um, so it is in Alberta hosted by ASBA, which is kind of a cool opportunity, likely a very expensive one, but I hope we do have a chance to chat about it because it was very different PD than I've seen from any of the other groups. So I, it was really valuable. Um, it was fun to do the parade in Legal and went to check out the open house on Monday, which was fun. Um, I also went to powwow on the Sunday at Alexander, which was great. And I, I went to the unveiling of the Treaty 6 monument at the le legislature. It was not, it was all the indigenous groups, the chiefs of all of the adhesion um, signing of Treaty 6 were all there and were able to speak. And of course, Grand Chief George Arcan Jr. And yeah, and me. And luckily, I was very impressed out of all of the Indigenous people there, very few settlers, but I did see the Mournville mayor and one of our councillors attend where very few representatives from, you know, MPs, MLAs were to me visibly absent. So I think that was really great. And I think our board really is walking the walk and we're showing up and we really want to be part of reconciliation and what that actually means and the actions that go with it. So I'm really happy to hear Joe's report as well. That's really mirroring what we're doing. Um, and I went through a lot of the ASBA uh, TLC, the learning courses on ASBA website. I did almost all of them. Um, and then I also went through some of the Ontario um, school board stuff because it's very similar to what the SBA is trying to do with their certification. And I found that it's a lot of the lot of repetition, a lot of the same stuff, um, but some really great links to resources that I'll I'll be sharing as they come up or as necessary. And that's. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Trish Marie Elliott, Ward 4. Um, the only thing I attended this summer was the Public School Board Council barbecue and PD and business meetings. So I can give you some more in-depth on what happened there during the report on TSBAA. Thank you. Cindy Briggs, Board 2. I attended the Legal Parade with some of our fellow trustees and superintendent, and it was a wonderful day meeting the community. Also attended the open house on Monday, which was a, a nice little groundbreaking event. So good job to Principal Brenice. Also had fun kind of watching Bonacourt School being painted all summer. So that was exciting and it's looking great. And Lillian Schick got new sidewalks. So it's been a great summer for Bonacourt. Thank you. Janine. Uh, Janine Pecklin, Ward 1. I took a beautiful, glorious summer off. I did talk to some parents here and there and had some questions, but other than that, I hung out with my kids and my family. Thank you. Any questions? Any of the. OK, I do. Uh, I will mention something that we need to look into, Shauna, but uh, Harvey mentioned something that they're having a fairly large uh, celebration you call it celebration, but uh, on uh, September 30th for uh, reconciliation and uh, and wanted to make sure that I was there. So I'm I, we need to check a little bit of what that is and what it really means. So. OK. OK, uh, I'm not sure what everybody's got to report, but advocacy committee. Uh, I guess advocacy committee attended the I guess that would be officially who attended the parade and hopefully that is kind of the starter of what was proposed last year of creating a kit that can go out to parades and that's all from advocacy. Okay, any questions? Building and maintenance committee. We have not met at this time. Okay, thank you. Finance and human resources committee. 
We have not met since the last reporting. OK, thank you. Uh, policy committee. Stacy. We've also not met since the last meeting. OK. And transportation committee. We haven't met since the last meeting. OK, and teacher board advisory committee. Yes, we do have a memo on that. Who's talking about that? Are you Janine? Are you? Irene Gibbons, Ward 7. So we had a meeting on June 23rd. Um, we discussed the feedback for the 2023-2024 calendar. Uh, unanimous response from Sturgeon Public Teachers is that they appreciate and enjoy the fall break and would like to keep that in the calendar. Um, there was mixed response from teachers between an early Christmas break or a longer break in January. So it's it's kind of mixed on. You start earlier. Do you start in the middle of the week? Um, and they were happy with the number of PD days. Um, we had talked about because they had had PD days on Friday and they switched to PD days on Monday and which they preferred and there again was a mixed reaction. So about it we. And the reports in front of you too, so thank you. Any questions on that? Reports from special committee and task groups 8.1 Alberta School Board Association. Uh, Janine Pickwin, Ward 1. We have not had a meeting since. Last school year, um, as soon as I get an agenda and dates for this year coming up, I will put them all to you guys. Great, thank you. Public School Board Association. We did have a council meeting in August and I'll just quickly go over a couple of the concerns. Um, PSBAA is quite disturbed about the funding cuts to ASCA, our parent organizations. So what they're asking us to do is encourage our school councils to use their grant money to get training from ASCA. And if there are any ways we can partner with them to help them out. Everyone recognizes that this is a very important group and uh, we, we, we would hate to see them disappear. So uh, the good news, we had a new division join PSBAA Lethbridge and there were a couple more that are not members that attended. So we're slowly working on getting uh, more and more of our public school boards into our association. Uh, a couple of upcoming events is uh, our annual general meeting, October 12th to 14th, usually here in Edmonton, I believe it is. And our next council meeting is November 16th to 18th. Um, we are going to be having Stephen Covey giving us PD. It's I think it's going to be one charge for the whole board. And we were thinking if anyone was interested, perhaps we could have it happen here in the boardroom since it's online and if anyone else wanted to go ahead September 23rd what Franklin Covey's the unconscious bias okay presentation is September 23rd sorry I got the dates wrong September that's okay. 23rd but, uh, oh, but that's you're right up pretty soon yeah it's a Friday <laughs> the well, I think it's the last Friday in September and it's um or the second last one it is a presentation on unconscious bias. It's one flat rate fee for every board. So if we wanted 30 people to sit in, if, if all of senior admin and and their associated staff wanted to come and participate, we could all do that together. We don't all have to be in the same room, but I just thought it might be something great to do as a team. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for correcting the date there, Tasha. I don't know why. Um, just quickly, the highlights from the um, 
the business meeting. Uh, we they ha they gave their reports. They're talking about some potential changes to the environmental scan, um, update of the work plan review and priorities for the upcoming year. The there's a video online at PSBA on the upcoming budget for the year. Um, the good news is they're saying 0% increase to the members, which is always good in these times. And they have a new board for uh, compensation review committee. So that's something they set up. I was thinking of going on that, but they seem to have a, um, a concern of a conflict if uh, someone from a board that had a member of the executive on that that might be a conflict. So they ended up with members who were who did not have board members on the executive. So and as far as the PD went, and I'll send you guys all copies of this because this PD was really amazing. We took they gave us topics and they wanted us to to come up with uh, issues to do with it on on demographics, on political trends, on technology and uh, legislation and regulatory trends and an example on demographics just around our table we came up with you know declining school population and increase in homelessness and addictions and um, movement of young people into bigger centers and then how do we address these things so i didn't want to send everyone a whole bunch of stuff to read this week but i will forward all this to you and you can just uh, have a look at your convenience so it was really interesting stuff and really well done. And that's it for PSBAA. If there's any questions. Uh, one thing on that, we'll uh, look into that PD and we'll see you know, exactly what's being presented and then we'll get it out to everybody and see if we're interested as a division on getting something like that. Okay. Thank you. Janine. Zone 23 is September 23rd. Okay. Uh, new business. None. Unfinished business. None. Those of motion. Any? Information. I don't see any information presented. Comment and question period. Anything from ATA or QP? I don't believe any. either one of them are on. Any community members that have uh, something they'd like to say on the agenda today? No. Okay. And any media? I don't believe there's any media on. So we're good there. Okay. Um, any requests for information? Okay. Thank you. I'd like to adjourn our public meeting and. We'll move into our in camera. I guess we won't adjourn our public meeting. We will motion to go in camera. Sorry. I, I will move us in camera. Thank you, Asha. Everybody for? Okay, thank you for all those who attended. Thank you very much. We'll take a we'll take a ten minute break.